the people who are going to be doing well in any field are the people who have an extremely high value on doing it and mastering it and doing it in a way that's fair to make a difference in people's lives. So if you sincerely find a niche that you're truly most inspired by, that you know is a need out there, and you target that, you'll be the one that, ri that rides and, and thrives. Just because of thousands of people are doing coaching doesn't mean that everybody's going to do well. The, the people who are going to do well, the ones that are going to deliver the service, and they're going to do it more effectively. So if you don't even believe that you can do it effectively, it's because you're comparing yourself to others instead of comparing your daily actions to your own highest values and what the needs of the highest values of your clients are. If you focus on the highest values of yourself and the highest values of your clients and stick to those, you will be the one that succeeds in that endeavor. You know, if, if you're trying to be second at being Elvis, you're not going to be first at being you. When I got asked on the, on the Vogue magazine interview one time, I had 17 questions that they asked me. There's a lovely young girl that was asking me these questions. And um, I think she was probably late 20s or something. It's a bit naive, I think. But she, she said, well, Dr. Demon, the very last question says, if there's anybody in the world that you could be, who would you want to be? <laughs> and I looked at her and I thought, what a weird question. And I said, well, ma'am, I have no desire to be anybody but me. Why would I want to be anybody but me? And she goes, really? And I go, oh, people usually say, I want to be the Kardashians or I want to be this. Or, Why would I want to be somebody other than me? Because I can be my magnificent me, but I can't be second at being somebody else. And the, the, the thing is, is and I, 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 I was in um, Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, and I was getting ready to do a breakthrough experience there. And the lady that was hosting me had a husband who was a PhD in psychology, very sharp guy. And uh, he got his PA, asked him what his PhD was on. <clears throat> he said it was on William James. I said, so you did a PhD on William James? Yeah, he said, I took a tiny portion of William James' life and his teachings, and I created my PhD around that one niche, that one little topic. I said, so you basically spent additional four years studying one man's tiny portion of one man's life. He goes, yes. Isn't it interesting? You got a PhD, and people will look up to you with a PhD because you studied a tiny portion of one man's life, and yet people have a whole life that may not have been studied, but they have a whole life and they somehow think that you're more uh, ingenious because you have a PhD than they do in their life. It's kind of irrational. We all have multiple PhDs in different aspects of our life, but if we compare what we're wanting to learn with somebody else's values and then not honoring what we know, we're gonna think ourselves as idiots compared to them. As Einstein said, a, a cat, right, that expects to swim like a fish is gonna beat itself up and a fish expects to climb like a cat's gonna beat itself up. But a cat honoring its cathood is going to do quite great, great in the cat industry. So you got to find the industry that's truly inspiring to you that you can't wait to do. Don't try to go down a path of coaching on something you don't spontaneously love doing on a daily basis. So you won't have the resilience and adaptability because it won't be your highest value. And the second you do, you'll be highly volatile with the markets and want to blame things and want to give excuses. And you'll, you'll procrastinate, hesitate, and frustrate on those areas. If you're going to go into coaching and everything else, then find the niche that you can't wait to get up in the morning and do that people can't wait to get. And you got to care enough about the people to find out what their needs are to meet those needs. If you don't do that, you're not going to thrive in that business. And yes, there is a lot of business out there right now. And, and almost everybody, no matter what the situation has something that they have, that they have a need in, there's always a new need. Uh, if, if Bezos added a hundred thousand people to his business, Amazon right now during the coronavirus, he obviously is meeting people's needs. He hired 100,000 people. That's the biggest hiring spree ever had. So why is it that this man is, is thriving during this? It's because of foresight and because everybody needs right now online distribution, online purchases, online deliveries, online this. So here's a guy that was at the cutting edge doing it. So what would happen if you came up with online coaching, online this and online deliveries and who knows? But if you meet people's needs and you help them solve the problems, they'll be there. Either, I, I don't know. I think we have 5,000 something, 500 people or something on, on this uh, thing today. If they're on there, they must be meeting some sort of need. Something I'm saying must be a value or they wouldn't want to take up their hour of their time to come on this line. 
So if I, if I, have, I have the responsibility to give you something of value. If I don't do it, you, you're not going to come back to me. You're going to go on to somebody else. And my job, my accountability is to keep studying and keep learning and keep growing and keep delivering some sort of value. If I'm going to be a coach or teacher, that's my responsibility. You got to own that responsibility and you got to be the master of it. You got to go out there and put more into it than the guy next door. And if you do that, there, by, by the way, every relationship you have, whether it be a, a spouse, a kid, believe it or not, even your kids will leave you, a spouse, a kid, uh, a, a client or whatever, they're only going to stay with you. Your, your own security has nothing to do with them. Your security has everything with you meeting their needs. That's it. Now, if you can do that more effectively than somebody else, you get the business. There's no escape from that. There's no shortcuts. There's just reality. So go and become the greatest at what you do. Ask yourself, as Colin said, what is, it, what is it that I can be the greatest at? What is it that I would love to be the greatest at? What is it that I'm actually demonstrating the evidence that I'm towards moving towards that greatest at? And what can I do that will serve people with that greatest at? 